This is the last lecture in Equilibrium Thermodynamics. Hold your applause. We're going to talk here in this part of lecture 14, the ion activity coefficients. So chemical potential of ions in solution. For instance, if you dissolve sodium chloride into water, you get ions. And we saw from the last lecture that we have to consider not only the chemical potential, but also the electric potential of the sodium ions and chloride ions. And we combine those into an electrochemical potential. Now what we're going to do is to look in more detail about those. And it turns out that these ions are very far from ideal when they're in solution. We might expect that because we have interactions uh, between the ions and typically we use aqueous solutions. So the ion will interact with the water with ion dipole forces and therefore considerably altering their behavior from ideal behavior. Actually, let's just go and take an example. Suppose we have sodium Na2SO4, sodium sulfur, uh, sulfate, and we put this in water what will happen is that we'll get two sodium ions, aqueous, and one sulfate ion, aqueous. All right, so these are the ions in solution that we're interested in. Let's write down the uh, chemical potentials of these. Well, the electrochemical potential of the sodium ions, we have to use electrochemical potential because we're using ions, charges. Well, that will be the standard state electrochemical potential the sodium ion plus uh, RT times the natural log of the activity of the sodium ions in solution. And where, remember the activity here, we're going to define as the activity coefficient taking into account non-ideal behavior and we're going to use, instead of mole fraction, we're going to use what everybody else uses as molal concentrations. So this will be the molal concentration of sodium ion divided by the standard state, which is one molal. So what we're doing here is using a one molal standard state. So this, no, sorry, this would be standard state. So this standard state refers to a one molal solution. Effectively, that means that we're going to have to express concentrations of ions in molal. And that's what everybody does. If we look at the electrochemical potential of the sulfate, that's the same kind of expression. Electrochemical potential of sulfate in the standard state, which is 1 molal, plus RT times the natural log of the activity of sulfate, where the activity of sulfate is the activity coefficient of sulfate, times the molal concentration of sulfate divided by the standard state, which is one molal concentration. All right, so, so far so good. But the problem is here that you cannot just measure the chemical potential or electrochemical potential of sodium alone or of sulfate alone because you can get a bottle or a solution of just sulfate ions with the sulfate ions have to come, or with the sulfate ions have to come sodium ions and vice versa. So really, you can't just measure these activity coefficients separately. What you have to do is to look at some combination of the two. Well, let's now look, say, at the total. So the total, we'll have to add, put in some averages, and we'll define how those averages are in just a minute. Uh, but we'll look at the total chemical potential, electrochemical potential, that will be the number of at or the number of ions of sodium times the chemical potential, this electrochemical potential, the sodium ions, plus the number of sulfate ions times the chemical potential of the sulfate. Total chemical potential of the solutes, which are the sodium ions and the sulfate ions. And here the sodium the number of sodium ions you get the number of sulfate ions you get is related to the stoichiometric coefficients. Here the number of sodium ions would be 2 and the number of sulfate ions would just be 1. Okay, so that's the key point is you can't measure just by itself the sodium ions or the chloride, the sulfate ions. You have to measure them together and you get some sort of average.